Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for part two of episode four of Kerbal Rising. And with the battle won over Gilly in the last part of the episode, with a well, just a glorious victory by our fleet, with no losses, even though they had well, they had very well armored and armed ships. Uh, well, the space is clear for our carriers to move down to Eve. So we send down the UFN Hercules and the UFN Titan down into low orbits of Eve, so that we can dispatch our ground forces to go and clean up the enemies on the surface. Eve is no pushover. It had a very powerful nation in control of it in the old days, and it still has a large amount of military hardware, including quite a serious set of naval hardware on the surface. So we will need to send some serious vehicles down there to, the, to destroy it. But first, we need to clear the airspace of Eve so that our bombers won't be shot down. So the planetary attack force in the UFN Titan comprises of two F-96 Skycats, or as I like to call them, Space 15s, because they're, well, they're based on the uh, F-15, but they're upgraded for modern times. They have thermal turbo jets, they can operate in space, they have a docking port on the top, as you can see, and, uh, well, they're far superior and will work quite nicely on Eve for, um, well, for dispatching the fighters that happen to be down there, which happen to be some, uh, basically SU-27s, so I thought it was appropriate to build some F-15s. I'll probably build something more futuristic at some point, but I don't know, I thought this was fun. So, uh, we do a little deorbit with our RCS engines, because, well, we want to be able to do a little bit of orbital maneuvering very... without adding too much mass, so I just included some monopropellant engines. Nothing too futuristic about that, but it does the job. Using burn together, of course, to keep them in perfect tandem. Well, that is until we come to the re-entry. You can have as much burn together as you want on craft, but uh, re-entry is a rather nice uh, kind of demonstration of chaotic systems where very small differences in initial condi conditions can result in pretty massively different outcomes. So these are pretty similar. One's a little bit higher, one's a little bit forward, but uh, they'll start to flip out and go crazy, as you'll see. <laughs> there goes the first one. Now the problem is these are actually just about stable aircraft, but when you're traveling at 3200 meters per second through EVE's atmosphere um, with a very tail-heavy aircraft, it is just going to go backwards, because there's two nuclear reactors at the back, so it's just going to want to go backwards. The aerodynamics doesn't really matter that much, and it's very different at a higher speeds. Um, but as you can see, we drift, you know, kind of seven kilometers apart. This isn't too much of a problem, as long as they get, you know, down to the surface within load range, we should be fine. And in fact, after a lot of twirling and re-entering, the uh, aircraft get a little more stable and starts to kind of start falling flat downwards and uh, kind of maintain a sort of four kilometer dif distance, and we actually managed to close them together. And eventually, uh, the lead Skycat does actually get a little bit of control. After a little bit of twirling, a little bit of engine burning, we manage to just about get some control back once we're going slowly enough and are uh, low enough in the atmosphere. And we're just going to fly over to our wingman, tell him to follow us, and eventually we'll link up and head over, just over that island in the distance, to go and deal with the uh, SU, I don't know what the actual designation is, but basically SU-27s, um, but more futuristic, which will also have the same kind of engines I have, which is why these can fly on EVE, by the way. And Anyway, after a little bit of uh, flailing about and a little bit of uh, or, uh, kind of atmospheric ballet, our uh, wingman does manage to get on our tail in rather glorious fashion, I must say. Look at him just diving in there, and he links up with us. A rather beautiful scene after, well, worrying that these would both just crash into the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, Eve's a little tricky, but we figured it out, and uh, I have to say... Aircraft work rather nicely on EVE. The very thick atmosphere does limit speed, but it does mean when you turn, your prograde marker just stays on you. There's like no angle of attack. It's incredible. So the dogfights are actually pretty fun. But anyway, as we approach, the uh, the Evian planes get wind of our attack and uh, take off from their aircraft carrier very quickly, because of course, very thick atmosphere, and our planes dive in for the kill. We'll release some missiles first, but um, missiles can't really get up to speed in Eve's atmosphere, and also, it's you can just maneuver so easily that you don't even need countermeasures to avoid uh, missiles on Eve. So, it'll mostly just be kind of... Just for show, really, there's no point in... They might as well launch them, you know, it'll 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 at least slow down the enemy, but, uh, yeah. 
Um, I also apparently only put one Sidewinder on here and two Amrams. I apparently forgot how to uh, Symmetry, which may have been one of the reasons our re-entry was so bad. Or, well, not re-entry. I guess just entry. We haven't been here before. Anyway, uh, so yeah, everyone starts avoiding missiles. I've just let the Guard Mode and uh, Wingman deal with uh, flying because it's been a while since I've actually done a dogfight and uh, I don't have my joystick about, so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the uh, missiles do nothing except to, for a little while, distract my guns. Uh, they start shooting at the missiles, I don't know. Anyway, eventually though we do get close and the dogfight begins, and because of Eve's very thick atmosphere we can't actually get up to very high speed, so it's going to be very close combat, and it is rather beautiful. The Sukhois get on my tail quite quickly, and you can see them starting to open fire, but um, I'm having no trouble avoiding that fire for now at least. And um, after before long I'm on the tail of the Sukhoi. These are pretty evenly matched, I think they're just limited by their um, AI pilots, maybe we should have tweaked them a little bit for Eve. Uh, but yes, so we start shooting one of them and actually get some good hits as it's chasing my wingman. We need to fight him off our wingman's tail and we get some good hits. No actual damage, but he'll be scared and you can see us just sticking to his tail and how close we are. This is some ace combat shit up in here. I love this. I mean, I love watching dogfights, but I think I might do next episode, next season of um, Fighter Jet Showdown on Eve because, oh my god. We start taking a little bit of fire from one of the Sukhois um, from behind us, and we're going to bug out. It's right there, but our wingman there, the Skycap, buzzes in and chases him off. It's a lot of just exchanging that kind of blows, and uh, this goes on for quite a while. The, the AI pilot having a little trouble with Eve, but doing pretty well, actually. Much better than Duna, at least. And we've got a nice, uh, not, well, I was going to say a nice, an evil Sukhoi on our tail, and you can see it chasing us. Rather beautiful. I don't exactly know who built these, but they are... Very nice, um, and oh, look at that, just right on the tail, and uh, I'm just trying to avoid, but I think my wingman's going to chase one of them off at least now, and hopefully we can avoid and try and put down some fire. We briefly lose control, but uh, gain it back very quickly, because Eve. Um, now we've got our wingman, I believe, on the tail of one of the Sukhois, and I'm running up to, well, the wingman's running up to help him when I get struck by a bunch of bullets, strips off half of my plane, and it is now two on one. The uh, Skycat stays in the air, actually, but uh, is pretty much useless. So now it's two on one, and I decide, well, that means it's time for me to fly. Now, I haven't flown a lot on EVE. I'm not a particularly good fighter pilot, especially not with the keyboard. So this was maybe a mistake, but what I did know is I could take full advantage of the ability to turn of this aircraft because uh, the AI pilot was limiting it. So I just thought, yeah, give it a shot. You know, let's have some fun, and it is fun to fly on EVE. Um, so I'm going to try and outmaneuver these planes a little bit and maybe take one of them out. Um, but you can see that just the kind of rate of turning and maneuvering is a little bit too much for a human, especially an untrained one like myself. Um, and everything's just flicking around and there's two enemies, so I'm having real trouble just kind of staying on anything and getting my guns anywhere near. I get a few shots sort of close and actually do take out one of the enemy planes. I don't think I shot him. I think his wing hit my like fuselage so yeah anyway after that um, I was pretty happy with that one kill so I hand it back over the wingman uh, I hand it over back over the AI pilot sorry and um, just tweak the AI a little bit so that my planes as maneuverable as it can be so just upping its max G's and everything and uh, after doing that it's rather effective so uh, yeah <laughs> I thought it best not the best that I don't keep uh, flying given that I think that kill I got was probably a fluke I mean no it was a precision melee operation it was a you'd, you'd learn about it if you knew how to fly I'm a great fighter pilot you know it I learned it in ninja school um, you know just air combat melee anyway with the slightly upgraded AI pilot now my f50 my f96 dominates and strips off a wing and it comes off very violently when you do damage in an Eve dogfight things just rip off like that. This isn't sped up, it's just so thick. The, the atmosphere is so thick that things just fly off in ridiculous fashion and it's fantastic. But anyway, that is the other SU-9022, uh, um, 90210, dispatched and uh, falling into the ocean, uh, the ocean of Eve, which I imagine is rather nasty stuff. I definitely wouldn't want to be in there. So, uh, yeah, that's what you get for, um, well, actually being part of the nation that destroyed Kerbin, so I don't feel too bad about watching him die. We, <laughs> Jesus, Peter, man, this is a family-friendly channel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it slams into the ocean. We're going to go find that aircraft carrier to land on. The other Skycat is actually totally alive. Um, it's still flying, you know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we go and find uh, the aircraft carrier. Land on it the wrong way, but there's no aircraft, there's no aircraft on there. Um, so it's all good. 
And landing on an aircraft carrier on Kerbin is a little difficult. It's a short, you know, it's a short pla it's a, a short runway. But on Eve, it's very easy because the atmospheric drag is so high that you just slow down instantly, which is why you have to have your engines on all the time. So actually, aircraft carrier, pretty good idea for Eve. Um, the A and A industries clearly knew what they were doing. Not well enough, though, since uh, their planes were dispatched, one of which by me being a massive idiot, so yeah. Anyway, my uh, other my other Skycat does slam into the ocean after a little while, um, so that's a bit of a shame, but he died a hero, so it's fine. Anyway, the uh, spa the airspace is now clear over EVE as, lo as well as the space space, so we can send in our tactical bomber. This needs to go and take out a frigate sitting down on the surface of EVE. Um, a rather nasty one at that, and I don't mean a space frigate, I mean a sea frigate. So it's actually pretty tough, it has like 300 millimeters of armor and like 30 millimeter goalkeepers and intercept missiles, so uh, yeah, we better get down there. I've packed myself six anti-ship missiles, which should do the job of uh, ripping the enemy apart, hopefully at least, I, I, I think they should be okay. And uh, yeah, the, uh, re the entry into the atmosphere goes about as well as before. Um, very stable plane, but uh, not well enough to get through the atmosphere. It does actually stabilize at like 60 kilometers though, so I can stay pretty high and go actually pretty fast. I keep it above kind of 700 meters per second, which is nice because it, I came in way far away from the ship. However, flying this hard at this high altitude with not enough like atmosphere to cool in. Um, the engines do get a little hot, but it doesn't, it's nothing major, they just overheat a little bit. But here we are at uh, the Evian naval base, the naval base on EVE, and um, we have ourselves the frigate down there, the Suffolk class frigate. What an odd name. Sounds like a name from another universe. Um, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we're gonna come on in. I need to get pretty close. If this were Kerbin, I could just fire my missiles from here, but in testing I found that Eve has a thicker atmosphere. I know, pretty amazing discovery. Um, so I'm gonna have to get a little closer to kind of, uh, you know, fire my missiles. Problem being, I didn't bring any countermeasures, and this uh, ship has intercept missiles, so that's going to be problematic. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I use guard mode to set the target, um, and guard mode fires the first missile, then I take over manually, because I want to space my missiles so they can't be shot down too easily, and also I want to fire them within like 10 kilometers so they definitely hit the ship, because, uh, well, we kind of need to deal with this. The F-96 the F, the F Skycats couldn't really do much to this, especially given that they fired all of their missiles already. So yeah, we've got two away there. I'm going to release the rest. I get a little jumpy around here because I think it's starting to fire missiles at me, which is, uh, well, not a desirable thing to have happen because those are intercept missiles. And like I said, I didn't bring any countermeasures because apparently I forget things. Um, so yeah, I release the last two of my missiles and start bugging out. I'm not too worried about the missiles. This is a pretty maneuverable craft. It's EVE, and of course I am a ninja pilot. Um, you know, I'm, it's better than ace pilot. It's ninja pilot. You can pull off some crazy stuff. So the missile comes in, and it's about to hit me, but I pull a sick turn and a dive, and it, oh, it just flies on past. Just, wow, Peter, you're a great pilot. And the same happens with another one. Um, I was actually a little impressed at this. <laughs> I am making jokes, but uh, I just avoided missiles without flares, so... Yeah, I have to say, I love EVE. I think EVE might be my favorite planet for air combat now. My ship missiles strike the uh, ship and actually just totally destroy it. Um, I dodge a few more missiles with sick ninja skills. And uh, yeah, the battle is won pretty quick. I was a little worried about this, but um, well, with the ship missiles, it made destroying the ship pretty not too difficult. And with my sick ninja skills, we had no problem avoiding the missiles. I'm just going to take a low pass now and make sure the ship is dead. And it is. It's in two parts. Uh, there's uh, the bow and the stern are left, but not much else. And uh, pretty happy with that result. Um, yeah, I guess maybe if it had fired its missiles earlier, it would have lived, or something like that, or used its guns better. I don't really know, but I'm not questioning it. It's dead, so we're all good. Now I need to go and land the plane just to, you know, shoot some people and make sure they know who's boss. I was going to land on this road, but there's a bunch of, like, lights, like, lamp poles, and then, like, a barrier at the end, so I thought better of it. Um, maybe don't destroy the plane. Uh, <laughs> and I actually almost catch the wheel on the barrier and just like flip the plane forward. But I do land. Everything's okay. Again, it's very easy to land planes on EVE because you just slow down instantly, which is rather nice. And uh, yeah, that's all the forces cleared off EVE. Like I said in the last episode, which was part one of turn two, but part one of episode four, 
episode 4 comprising turn 4 and 5, so a little confusing. But uh, yeah, some people were confused about my naming convention. 4.1 just meant part 1, and this is 4.2. And yes, so in one turn we have taken over Eve, which I think is rather impressive. And uh, next turn we'll probably do a little bit of colonizing. I think there's just two colonization slots on Eve, because... Gilly can't really mount anything, and there's no oxygen atmosphere on Eve, so we can't put on, like, three mining bases or anything, so... Yeah, but, um, I'm pretty happy with the result. Pretty happy with how quickly that went. Of course, turn four, we just kind of, um just colonize Duna, and then turn five, well, we took a whole planet, and we can start colonizing this. I think our, uh, not empire, our democratic set of nations, our federation, is looking rather, rather good, so... Yeah, anyway... I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you'll come back for next episode, which will be... I don't know what I'm going to do in next episode. Probably go and just murder some people on another planet. I mean, bring freedom to some people on another planet. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Gatsby with Tape. I will see you next time.